I'm Pim Teshomunwaiwit. I'm the chef of Nam at the Como Metropolitan in Bangkok and also the chef owner of Gin Khao in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Let's see, how did I get to Nam? I was approached at some point in the summer of 2017. Um, Christina Ong, who's the owner of the Como. I was, you know, very flattered that she thought of me and um, I said no. <laughs> Running a restaurant is a, it's a big thing and Nam is all the way over in Bangkok. So every time I talk to her, I am, I was like, oh, you know, it's, it could be really fun. It could be such a great opportunity to get to cook it in Bangkok and to come home really because I was born and raised here. And then I think about it a little bit more and I was like, oh, it's in Bangkok. I live in San Francisco. So it sort of went back and forth for a while until she said I should just come over to just take a look. <laughs> So that's the organic section of the market. That's usually where I go first. This is our cool bag. <laughs> you need that for a Thai market. The leaves are called Bai Liang comes up from the south. Um, so these are from Shum Han, which is the southern part of Thailand. It's really long like that. Shum Han is about halfway down. And the leaves are really delicious. It's not too bitter. There's slight acridity to it, but not very bitter. It's great with um, just like tossing an omelet with a little garlic and fish sauce, obviously. So this is called Gluei Nam Wa. It's super, super nutritious. And it has a little bit of slimy texture. You kind of have to like it. Mm. And that one is Gluei Hak Mo. This is a different one completely. This, we actually grill over um, charcoal. Nice. It makes really, really sweet. Um, that one is a little bit like plantain. It's not great to eat alone. And you know what I'm What really is so inspiring to me about cooking in Bangkok is definitely the ingredients that you can get here. As I said, you know, the things that I struggle to find in the U.S., they're all over the place. In the U.S., we call these um, Persian cucumbers. That's good. It's not just, you know, finding one good fish sauce, but you sort of, you know, go out in search of a lot of artisans who are making fish sauces and you find something, um, one that's made with saltwater fish, Bla Sai Tan, and another one that's made with um, freshwater fish from Bla Soi, and, um, and the one that we saw at the market today, which, wasn't, which is not made with fish at all, but it's kind of a byproduct from the making of shrimp paste. So it's made with little krill and shrimp. It's not even a fish sauce. It's made from little baby krill, shrimp. They have different flavors, they say different things really, and when you sort of use it in a dish, it tells a different story about a flavor. You know, it's great that you find a good coconut sugar or palm sugar, and you talk to um, the, the farmer or the seller at the market, and he's like, yeah, if you want to buy more of this, you have to give me a few days ahead because I need to call my grandmother in the south because she makes them. And, um, and it's great because I think it's also kind of our responsibility to support these artisans who are doing things the old way. And if you make it commercially viable for them to do this and you know to have a good business and to be able to make a good living, you can um, they'll stay around in this profession and they keep making these delicious things that you can use in your cuisine. About a year 
after I opened Kin Khao, I was diagnosed with um, breast cancer. And it was, it was a big shock, right? I mean, I've always been pretty healthy. I take good care of myself. I exercise, I do yoga, I eat good food. I don't eat junk stuff, but oh, I have cancer. And Kin Khao is my first restaurant. It really is my first job in the restaurant business. So getting diagnosed a year after I opened Gin Khao was, uh, it was interesting because I felt like I kind of had to do everything. I had to be there. And then all of a sudden, oh, um, hmm, you have cancer. You kind of have to walk away and take care of yourself because it's a long process to get well again. So it, it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about teamwork, especially. It taught me to rely on other people, which was kind of a tough thing to learn, you know? I feel like I'm independent, I can do things. I didn't have to rely on anyone. And all of a sudden, you have to just walk away, right? I, sorry, can't come in today. I've got to go do stuff now. So it, um, it really taught me a lot about building a very strong team and making sure that um, you know people will step up for each other. You know, you spend so much time together, and um, and it's a high pressure environment. And you know, when you face a lot of that together, you definitely feel like you're um, you're a family. I mean, you should definitely, you know, take an inspiration from the food that you eat, right? What the ingredients are, look at, you know, who made those ingredients, who grew those ingredients, and where the dish is coming from, and learn a little bit more about it, and maybe it'll inspire you to try to replicate it, and then, and then you can keep on teaching it to other people. That's keeping the chain going. <laughs> Come visit us in Bangkok or in San Francisco. Make a reservation though. <laughs>位在于浊水溪的南岸我们紧邻着浊水溪所以也孕育了我们赤铜很多的农作物包括比较特色的有日据时代献给日本天皇的谢纳米那第二个当然是气候我们其实我们的气候常年是在二十到二十八这个中间
其实我觉得我自己很幸运，因为我打从一开始，我的身边有很多就是已经累积一二十年经验的蛟龙，对，他在旁边一直不断的指导我，呃，不管是在管理上面或技术上面，对。哦，这蛟龙也是七轮八八，嘿，但是过一礼拜就只要要接近八轮八，咱咱就爱挂。好啊，好。所以看八刀嘛，做些美感的呢。嗯，啊，当然就爱看好些啊，啊，你这今朝吼，应该是拢差不多。哦，伊巴肚啦膨起来，咱就是只要要接近啊，啊，所以这里价格咱来甲金蕉种好水，哦，就从咱这里金蕉啦接近三十五公斤，啊，你若讲二十块来讲，咱来种个长毛有六七八个，佫还好。重要是品质啦，对啊，你品质够好势，伊主人伊就是回馈予你，有钱有机会啦。但是你管理无好势，就是无迄个机会，你放弃嘛是无迄个机会。啊，重点是管理啊，你着。把这经济先管理好，安尼吼，啊不管你技术里边哪件。我我觉得我种出来的香蕉在台湾，每个人都吃得到我种的香蕉。那甚至现在远在日本的日本人也都可以吃得到我的香蕉，所以我觉得那个是带给我一个很大的成就感之一。我觉得价钱对蕉农来讲是一个很，我觉得是比较艰困的问题，因为我们没办法去决定说价格的高低，我们能做的只是说把我们自己的产品管理得好。毕竟香蕉这个产业，老实说它是长期作物，它真的是从你蕉苗小小的蕉苗种到你可以采收完成。送到分装厂去，整整要一年的时间。那一年的时间，你投入下来的心力跟劳力，其实那个都远大于说你最后的收购价钱。对，所以有时候你会觉得，你种一整年这么辛苦的东西，结果到最后，因产量过剩或是其他原因，导致价格崩盘。说实在，那个心里真的是会很难受。我我最惨是那五六块的时候，真的是连成本都不符合。可是你你是农民，你站在农民角度，你还是要割啊！你已经好了，香蕉好了，就是不能等。其实政府现在已经在帮忙很多了，因为光外销这一块，我就觉得它其实帮助了不少。那我们更希望它能够再拓展一些其他的外销市场，不单单可能只有日本，可能其他国家希望它也可以帮我们开发出来这样子。which is a savory soup. And you can add to it almost any kinds of vegetables. Today, we're making it with pumpkin. You can use any kind of squash or pumpkin, really, as long as, as, long as they have a good savory quality to it and not too sweet. And what you do is steam it first. Um, if it's the kind of squash that the skin is edible, you can steam it whole and then cut it in bite-sized pieces. To this, I'd like to add some mushrooms, some young baby corn, and some green vegetables, and finish with lemon basil. Here's the dried shrimp. We dry and smoke it here on coconut ash, and then we pound it into a paste with a little bit of shallot and shrimp paste. This is pakwan, baby corn, and very important is Bai Meng Lak, which is lemon basil. So you can see that these pumpkins are steamed until they're almost cooked through, but not quite. We're going to finish cooking it in the soup. The peel is edible, so you kind of want to cut it so that you keep the peel with every piece. Some mushrooms. You can cut it in any shape, really, but when you serve Thai food, we don't give people knives. So when you cut things, just we like to cut them in bite sizes. And you want, if you want protein in this soup, you could put shrimp or chicken or anything, but today I think we're just going to make it all vegetarian. So, let's make a soup. 
chicken broth. It's a little bit murky like this. That's how it's supposed to be. It's really savory and delicious. The paste itself is quite good. Pumpkin was partially boiled, so now I'm just going to finish it in the soup so that the flavor of the broth goes into the pumpkin. I have to be careful with fish sauce because the paste has quite a bit of shrimp paste in it. So don't add too much because it's going to be salty. So the next one we're going to make is a curry. You can make this curry with um, curry paste that you can buy at the store. Green banana in there is really delicious. It adds a touch of sweet sweetness, but not too sweet because raw banana doesn't have that much sugar and it goes really well with the texture of the um, beef. You can use any kind of bananas, really. This particular one in Thailand, it's called Gluey Nam Wa. We're making it with two curry paste, a green curry paste made with green chilies, and a red curry paste made with dried red chili. So here's the ingredients for chili paste. Some mace, some star anise, some spices, galango, shrimp paste. The red one is made with dried red chilies, and the green one is made with green chilies. Also, the peel from makrut lime. Before we can cook with this green bananas or raw bananas, we have to hard cook it. So you basically just boil it in regular water, just boiling water until the skin begins to break. You want to get rid of some acridity from, from the green banana. The beef cut that we use for this curry is called a scotch roll. You have to cook it at a low temperature for quite a long time before it's tender. And then this will be cooked with the curry after it's already done. And we just basically poach this in um, coconut milk. And also I'm going to add to the curry some young pepper and some yellow bell peppers. Put some color. see it's some really nice connective tissue there that's been poached very very gently in coconut milk so the meat is nice and tender I think this is good that's enough so this is the banana now you can peel it when it's raw and green like that you can't really peel it so Curries. We're gonna start making our curry. This is coconut cream and coconut milk and some chicken broth. That's what we're going to cook our curries with. This curry is made with a mix of green curry paste, which you can buy, and a little red curry paste for color, and an added flavor. Of course, if you don't want it so spicy, you can use a little bit red curry paste. Just don't tell me about it. <laughs> this is 
how blooming the curry paste. You want to cook the curry paste in coconut milk or coconut cream to let all the aromatics come out of the paste first and you know that it's ready when the oil begins to break from the coconut milk. We add our beef. Toss the beef just to get the flavor into the meat. Again, give it a minute to make friends. A little smidgen of coconut sugar, just a little, just to round things out. Fish sauce. Don't add too much, you can always add later. And now the bananas. Now add a little bit of coconut milk. And if it gets too thick, you can add a little chicken broth or just water. Now you can taste. Mmm, it's good. And be careful when you stir this because you don't want to mash your banana. You know that the curry is correct when there's a layer of oil broken out of it. Which is really funny, I try to tell this to French trained cooks and it's just painful for them to break the sauce. It's like just physically difficult. I was like, no, cook it more, you want to break the sauce and it just seems like such a difficult thing for French trained cooks to do. But Thai cooks always want to break the sauce. Some of our peppers. The peppers doesn't need to cook very much, so I'm adding it when I think it's ready already. And then to finish, we're giving it a squeeze of makrut lime. A little bit lime leaf. And that's it. We're finished. Then you want to finish with a handful of Thai basil. Stir it in at the last minute because you don't want it to turn gray on us. I hope you had fun watching this and I hope you try this at home.